guys, welcome back to FLA Labs. Today I have a really cool project for you, but first, much better. Let's get started. First step is to model it. I did it in Fusion 360 and you can see that here. Uh, fortunately for you, all the hard work is done and these STLs are available on Thingiverse. So head on over to Thingiverse. My account is FLA Labs and there's a link in the description. Uh, this most recent item you'll see here is the Lithophane Lantern. That's what it's going to look like, sneak peek. Okay, this is hard. I'm halfway through editing and I realized that this is a really boring video if you're not planning on building your own. But I want the video to exist so that people can build their own. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put chapters in the description. If you're planning on building your own, then keep watching. We're going to go through all the details and we're going to get this done right. But for those of you who are just here for cool 3D printing and build montages, that's totally fine. Skip ahead to the chapters that you find interesting. It won't hurt my feelings. Okay, let's get back to it. So the next step is to actually make the lithophanes that are going to go in your lantern. Uh, again, on this same Thingiverse post, if you scroll down in the description, you can see a link. This is the website that I use to make all of my lithophanes, and here are the settings that you're going to want to use uh, in order for your lithophane to fit properly in our lamp. So I'm going to open this up in a new tab. This is what the website looks like. So you're going to grab an image. I have this astronaut. So the width is 100, the height is 150, depth and base height are both 7.5 millimeters, and this overhanging angle can actually be 45. Now you can see there's a little frame showing you what portion of my image is going to be used. So I actually want to go ahead and shift that window to center up my astronaut just a little bit more. And that's it. This is what my lithophane is going to look like. So once you're happy with that, I'm just going to hit create STL. Now that we have our STLs, the next step will be to open our slicer. So for the lithophanes, we want to use specific settings to try to get them as clean as we can. So I'm going to grab the STLs that we got from that website and open it. So now if I pan around, that's what it's going to look like. You need to use the smallest nozzle that you have. For me, that's 0.4 millimeters. And then you want to use the highest quality. It's going to slow the print down, but it's also going to make the image a lot more clear. So I would recommend this super quality. That's one of the default settings. It's 0.12 millimeter layer height. We also want to make sure that our supports are turned off. And then the last thing, really important, the infill needs to be set to 100%. So you can see what it's doing, it's just printing really thin areas and then the rest really thick. Um, most of this picture is really dark because it's an astronaut space, um, but the parts where the astronaut is are very thin to make a nice bright white of his uniform. Another piece of advice for printing lithophanes, I make it so that my lithophane is perpendicular to the movement of the build plate. I think that that makes it slightly less likely to fall over. And then I also like to turn on a brim, so in build plate adhesion. Turn on brim, and you can see now this is going to create a brim around the base of the lithophane to make it less likely to tip over. What I haven't told you yet is that I'm actually designing this lantern to be donated to an auction that raises money for our local kids to go to space camp. When I reached out to Matter Hackers and told them what I was doing, they were eager to get involved. More about them later. When you're printing the other parts for this model, they're all pretty large. So what I recommend you do is to change your nozzle to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. That's going to speed up the changes a lot and change the quality down to standard quality 0.2 millimeters. For everything except the lamp, you're going to want supports turned off. And then for the lamp, you're going to want supports turned off. So as you can see, there's a lot of areas that without supports are going to fail. Um, so let's see what it looks like when we turn on our supports. Okay, and 10% info is good. Build plate adhesion, we don't need anything. Okay, so let's slice that and see what it looks like. This whole area is supports, and there's one on each side. That's supporting the upper arch that goes over the top of the lithophane when it's done. So across here, that's a solid piece. Uh, the reason we have this block in the middle here, it's just kind of floating is so that these two walls of supports are connected to each other and they don't fall out mid-print. I have had that happen. So this all looks good. Now that we have our G-code ready, let's start printing. Hey, I just wanted to take a quick minute to thank Matter Hackers for donating the materials for this project. Their build series filament is my go-to on any of these large prints and they were kind enough to donate enough for us to make this lantern. 
If you're interested in using Build Filament on any of your projects, check the link in my description. That's a great way to support my channel while also getting really good deals on great Build Filament.
thanks as always guys for watching this video. I had a lot of fun building the Lithophane Lantern and I'm so excited to let you know that it's available on thanks.com and on thingiverse.com. The links will be in the description. Thanks again to Matter Hackers for providing the material. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. We'll see you next time.